Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome here to Hoskins, Papua New Guinea. Brad and I are heading out to Lele today. I'm flying left seat just because it's a class C with 10% and uh, I don't really feel comfortable landing from the right seat because I don't do it very often. Not at a 10% slope, so 30 minute flight out there. Over 14% I'll introduce my low idle. Energy's coming up over 35%. Oil pressure's coming in and the ITT's 693. 20 degrees of flap center trim's already set up, looks like. Just heading out there empty today. Pick up some people and come on right back. We'll have two flights out there today though. It looks like the weather is going to be really nice, probably on both flights. Oh, it says it's 102 degrees in here. Going out at what, 7,000? Is that what we filed for, I that think? Sounds right, yeah. All right, switches and instruments. We've got 820 pounds of fuel. You and I, 5620. So we'll go 5665. 65 if we had to come back land, and 56 for our rotate speed. Ops are set, indicated, verified at 20. Our trims are set. All stations, Hoskins, 1271, November Tango Kilo. We'll be taxiing for departure at runway 12 with an eastbound departure. We'll be on climb 7000, all stations, Hoskins. Advise any traffic. Or is it 5565, November Tango Kilo Taxi? November Tango Kilo Mozilla. November Tango Kilo Taxi, Hoskins, Lele, 2 POB. November Tango Kilo, report traffic. November Tango Kilo. Alright, we will be airspeed alive by the 1,000 foot marker, otherwise we'll just stay on the runway because something's obviously wrong. After takeoff, we'll pitch for 85 knots, consider PL, consider feather. 85 then 80 full flaps. Emergencies, masters crack my door, and we could try to make a call, but there's enough people on here that I'm probably not going to waste my time, to be honest with that. That is done, that is done. Ignition and, and lights. 34 degrees Celsius right now, and we're at sea level, so should we at 1470? 1470 for 1520. Ignition condition flaps 20 fuel and harnesses. 1470, rotate 56. Fourteen seventy air speeds alive. There's fifty six by the thousand. But basically, bump up my ITT a little bit. It is warm. It's like a hair dryer blowing on you nearly. All right, over 85, there's 500 feet. We'll go 10 degrees of flaps. Man, where did all these bumps come from? We didn't have any of these like 20 minutes ago. We've got seven knots on tailwind though. Zero degrees and bring our prop to 2,000 RPM. But on the way out of here, we were, uh, actually on the way in here, Brent, uh, Brad and I were talking just about kind of procedures for departing and climbing out of 73, which is our VX, and we had a discussion. So we're going to try something on the way out here, really just for our own sake, just to see kind of what the plane does in a situation. If you were taking off, climbing out of VX, which is your best angle of climb, your steepest angle for the most amount of altitude and the shortest amount of distance. What would happen if you have an engine failure? Is, is the nose just going to fall over? Or can we actually uh, get up to a gliding speed enough before we just smack the ground? How much altitude are we going to lose? Things like that. And it's a little bit easier having two of us because we can monitor a little bit easier. So yeah, I'm curious myself to know, to be honest. Hope you wanted to do the calls. <laughs> So Brad is flying, he flew at the last place and landed to Candrian, taking you guys out there. But like I was saying, like this place, I just don't come in here often enough and a 10% slope, it's just, it's the awkwardness of doing a right hand landing on the side of a hill is just, it's a little too much for me right this minute. <laughs> All right, landing light bypass, igniters. 
Force B, 5565, five, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, Mulvey, go ahead. November Tango Kilo departed Hoskins time 03 on track 06 Niner, climbing 07,000, uh, 7, estimating Lele to Niner. November Tango Kilo. Alpha November. Let me just push on up for 100 just to get out. Under the lower humidity and get up into the cooler temps. Four one on six six two two at Alpha November minus. Now the clouds are really starting to balloon up a little bit. Yeah, they are. But according to Wendy, it should just stay just over the island. So I don't think we're gonna. I think it's not gonna get any worse. I think it's just gonna be like. It was just showing it as kind of like a blue. It didn't even have any kind of like cumulus looking stuff. It just said blue. So. I don't think they're going to get too much bigger, and I don't think there's going to be any type of rain associated with it. And like I said, our, our track right here is going to be pretty clear back to hospitals, I think, for the both flights. Because we don't have our vest or our raft on this one, I usually just cut it straight across, not necessarily on our track, but just a little bit closer to maybe five miles off the coast or something at seven or 8,000 feet, and we should be able to make it back to the coast, especially because we have wind coming off of the coast. All right, we're almost at 7,000. Let's go ahead and push our prop forward, and we'll do, we're slowing down, we'll go 20 degrees of flaps. We're just going to slow down to about 73 knots with 20 degrees of flaps, basically like our takeoff. Why don't you put like climb power in and climb at that and yeah, dump I'm it? Yeah, I'm going to. Okay. I'm going to get it to where it's 73 and then climbing, so then... That way, if we're going to be taking off, maybe 720 on the ITT. All right, so. All right, so there we go. If we want to go all the way over to 85. I thought I had it there for a second. What altitude did we start at? 74. Or, I'm sorry, 76, I think. Okay, 76. Let me try it again. Let's do it one more time. That was a 400 foot plus loss. All right, so we're shooting we're for 85, because we got 20 degrees, we want 85 for pitching. That's what we say when we do our departure. So let me up to 720. We'll pitch for around 15 degrees, and that's going to get us pretty close to our 73 knots. All right, starting at 77. Zero gravity. Come on, 85, 85, 85. All right, there's our 85. What do we lose? There's oh, maintaining it. We're going down at 2,200 feet per minute there for a second. Oh, how much did we we're lose? And we're still going down, right? Oh yeah, just because I just didn't put the power back in, but. It went to 2,200 feet and then 1,700 feet, basically kind of more leveling off at the 85 knots. But what was the altitude? It went from 77 to just over 74, so just under 300 feet loss. It'd be pretty scary if you're at 500 feet and you immediately lost 300 before you even got to an altitude or a speed that you could even glide at. Yeah. Before you're just 100 percent just. And you had an falling. immediate reaction. If there was an eight or ten second delay. Then yeah, you're that was immediate push. And we even went a little bit like negative G's almost, kind of like as I pushed. Yeah. So, anyways, that's what I'm saying is like, and I was like, I pushed it like really far. I felt like I did. Oh okay. yeah. And like what we were saying, I was telling him that I read an article that the average is 12 seconds if it was a real emergency by the time the average person makes a decisive decision, like a, a cognitive decision going, this is what I'm going to do. So we were saying, maybe, okay, let's just cut it in half. Six seconds, eight seconds. Like, oh, uh, yeah. I'd like to think that I would be quick on response, but I know I'd push over, but... Like thinking, oh, going immediately to the 85 or something, but 300 feet, and then you've got the ground. Like, like I don't know what our altitude, like, or what our, um, what'd that be, our angle going down. But I mean, all you would see is trees, and then you'd just be immediately going right back again, and so you'd probably just stall it because you're going way past your angle of attack, and then you just smack the ground. So, anyways, that's why I was saying.
typically, once I'm above anything, I'll just pitch for my 85 <laughs> to give myself at least a slightly better chance. Do you want to do it again at 85? Yeah, let's do that. See what okay. the difference is. Yeah. All right. 10 degrees. A second time, you really had it down, down well. I don't think you could do much better than the 300 feet loss. Because oh, I pushed it hard and I kept it until we had 85. All right, whoops, let's get our power in. We're gonna go up to 720 on our ITT, like just our climb. We're gonna pitch for around the seven and a half degree mark. So there's 740. Okay, we'll do it at 79, there's 85. <laughs> there's 85, all right, now I can kind of maintain that. What was that, that's 77 and a half? What's that? It's sort of 79, it's 150. You cut it in half. half. Yeah. That's, that's pretty significant. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so you just weren't as, you didn't have to be as aggressive nosing it down. Oh, yeah. As you were with the 73. There's no way you'd be that aggressive with the shock factor. Well, and the ground factor, I yeah. think, too. Like, it's going to be coming at you so fast, and then just the natural instinct is just going to go, oh, crap, because you're going to be going down at 2,000 feet per minute, and then there's no, you don't have any energy to flare. Like, you're just coming down and smacking the ground. Or this, you could at least continue on to uh, maybe 100 knots or 90 knots or something just to give yourself a little bit more margin. I don't know. All right, let's bring 1250 for our cruise now that we're halfway there. Yeah, 300 feet to 150 feet. Um, that's just good to know for our own sake, you know? Yeah. A bunch of clouds. We'll probably be able to wiggle through most of them, I'm thinking. Or we could go underneath of them, potentially, as well. All right, Lele, field elevation 20 or 1400, so field elevation, or traffic pattern, altitude 2400. That's the touchdown. I think it's different, I thought. Might be wrong. See if there's any info. 1320. I'm sorry? 1320. 1320. So elevation. I'm just going to go with 2300 for my pattern altitude. I didn't notice that for like two years. And I'm always like, why do I always feel like I'm high turning final? And then I'm a rush and then I'm coming in flat every time. And then I noticed it one day and I was like, oh crap, I'm like 80 feet high every single time turning final. And then I feel rushed, and then I get like, coming down, and then I'm like, Brr, and then I'm flat coming in, and every time. So we'll see if 2300 works a little better. Hey, okay, so bunches of clouds ahead of us. Our minimum safe, I think, is like 9,000 or something coming in here. Let's see, we've got a mountain here. Yeah. And a mountain there. We could go around that and come in if we wanted to. That's one option that we could do. That's quite a ways over there. I'm just barely seeing the bottom of this little hill right here. It looks like there's, it's kind of lower, like all over in that area. Another thing I'm gonna look at is, there's ground here and ground here. Potentially there, where that green portion is, yeah. is that there might be a way in that way. I'm gonna go off of that. And because as we head over this way, we've got a lake which there's a good chance that there's not going to be as many clouds above the lake. Okay. This is the direction I want to go because I want the experience of maneuvering in the clouds. But wouldn't it be easier to go around through those two hills? Oh yeah, it would definitely. Okay. It's and it would add it's, more it's to add it. Maybe like two minutes or three minutes maybe to the flight maybe. Okay. But, I mean, we fueled for bunches of extra, so. Yeah, I would, I would rather get the experience with the clouds because I'm not seeing it yet, for sure. I'm not seeing anything either. I'm just, I'm just going off of what I think it might do. Yeah. But I don't even. That's just what I think is just for the terrain. That's going to be my first guess, either that or over top of the lake. But because this comes in here further and there's a big valley showing there, and then once we get down, there's a bunch of little finger valleys going right up to Lele. I'm thinking that we'll be able to find a path in there. Do you want to 
Oh, we'll check out the strip. 1,400 feet, touchdown zones, 1,300 feet. I think 600 meters, 10% slope. It's a pretty rough strip. Okay. We can land with eight knots of tailwind if we were full up. But we're not, so we could even land with even more than that. But really into these places, like, I mean, my max is like eight to 10 knots, no matter what weight I am. It's just very uncomfortable coming in that much faster, 10 knots faster than over the ground that you would normally do. Uh, feels pretty awkward. If we have to go around, is power up 20 degrees, left hand turn out to the left. So if we don't see anything, we can continue on around this volcano and then cut in. And I imagine it's gonna be all open up in there. Okay. How long is it? Uh, 600 meters. Okay. It's not super short. It's not super short, 10%, but it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't feel like a 10% because like like I buy his touchdown is 9% but it seems so much more intimidating than this one because the approach like it doesn't just drop off to a 100 foot cliff or 80 foot cliff at the end where this is just kind of jungle and then it just kind of goes into it so right. it's just the intimidation factor is just not there it feels less than 10% yeah okay even right there that actually looks pretty dang good, I think. Okay. I'm seeing more over this way than I am up here. We'll, ch we'll check, we'll go this way, but we'll take a look at this one here when we go by it and just see, but this one looks like a pretty good option for me. Kind of need to get going down pretty soon, but it's just you and I, so I'm not really that worried about just dive bombing it down in there. So, Let's get my weights for me, please. I'll get my V-Rep set up now, or 5,500, so 64 knots. Collectors, fuel still good. Taws, we're gonna turn it off now. Our V-Rep is set up. Our lights now, we're 22 minutes, 10, or 22 miles, 10 minutes. Um, I'm gonna hold off on the rest for now. But so this is going straight over top of the lake, and it's quite a bit lower right here. I think it will open up even more and more as we keep going. Yeah, it seems like there's actually a place that lowers down over the lake. Potentially. I wonder if we'll see it. Okay, yeah, so it's opening up even more than it looked like. I'm at 7,000, so I've climbed up another 700 feet from just back there. Okay. And we'll just try it actually at this altitude without having to do anything, so. I'm going to go around this first one here, and then I'm going to try to head over that direction. Actually, I'm going to head over that direction right now. Okay. Um, and then come down through that uh, I, a trough. You can kind of see a little bit darker ground down in there. Yeah. That's you where think that's ground? Um, yeah, eventually. So, let's just take a look and see. I right, 7,200. Five knots of wind and it's bouncing us around as much. So I've got, yeah, it looks like it's starting to open up a little bit more over here. So, the lake underneath us. Vertical track. Uh, uh, uh. Terrain climbs really steep right there. You throw a terrain on. That's always helpful conditions like this where you're like you can't see any mountains and you're just kind of like eh, I'm not really 100% sure yeah, this, so the terrain is gonna climb up higher here and then all this terrain is about the same as Lele so around 2,500 feet and this mountain over here is right around 7,000 oh, 74 so we're really close to that well, not really close but it's <laughs> we're close to the altitude wise okay here we go see now you can start seeing some brown or some dirt through there, or not dirt, but ground. We're here, yeah. Yeah, and then it might look like it kind of channel goes up up that way. We're still 16 miles out. We do need to go down. We'll slow down, get a prop forward, give ourselves a little more time to think. And 10 degrees of flaps. Not lots of room. Let's keep going. Uh, let's go this way. It agrees for a second. Probably be easier oh, yeah. if when we come out of here is if we just go around the mountain over there. 
because our passengers aren't going to want to do this. So it's going to be in. Also, our passenger um, doesn't like flying. So we'll just take the easy route around that mountain over there and go down. Seemed more advantageous to go that direction. Why are we going this way? Uh, well, that's going to get me to the base of the mountain. I was kind of hoping, I saw up there for a second, but... Hoping to go around the mountain. Um, yeah, well, oh, you mean like right now? Yeah, I'm I mean, just kind of wiggling back and forth as the, turning so that I have a little bit more space rather than just 100% dive bombing yeah. down. It's it's broken enough that we won't have a problem getting down. Right. We might have to go full flaps here in a minute. Get down, but yeah, I guess if this was, if we had passengers, I wouldn't do this. I would have just gone the easy route 100%. Yeah. Like okay. this is just way too much work. They're already getting sick in the back, and I don't want to have to clean up their puke. <laughs> I was just seeing on the other side of this, I couldn't see this oh, yeah, area yeah. yet. But you... I'm just best turning speed. back and forth, because I still need to lose like 4,000 feet by the time I get to... Oh, look at that right there. 4,000 feet by the time I get down to where I want to. Okay. And that's the channel all the way into where we want to. So at this point, I'm bringing my power back in and starting to take my flaps out because I've got so much space that I can just go on down really fast. And I'm just even going to bring my prop back for a second. We want pattern altitude of 2,300 feet. We're 10 miles out. All stations Lele, 1271, November Tango Kilo, 10 miles to the west. Passing 5,800 on descent. Circuit time, Lele, 30. We'll definitely go out the other way unless it's 100% clear underneath of this, but I think it would just be that's bumpy if we go around the other way. Let me get my trim set up I'm all over the place. All stations led by Kodiak, November Tango Kilo, 4,700 on descent, estimating, uh, sorry, one zero miles to the west, estimating circuit time, three zero. I need runway two zero. Two zero, so we'll OBS to runway two zero zero. All right, now I'll take a look at it. It is clear underneath. So we could just go right underneath very easily. Over to the ocean? Uh, no, just exactly straight back on our course. Okay. So we, but this right here, I would say I've maybe had some like severe turbulence, maybe three or four times in PNG, and this valley right here is one of them. Like, okay. like we've only got seven knots, but yeah. This one probably made me nervous. I was like, oh my goodness, that was a little scary. All right, if we come back this way, which we can, it's just going to be so much closer to the ground and it's going to be bumpier. It's going to be so much easier if we just go around, especially with our passengers that don't really like flying. We can just go around that hill and it's going to add three minutes maybe to our flight. We've got the extra fuel on board, so we're not really worried about that. Okay. All right, so I want 64 in final, 74 and 84. So I really want kind of 94 flying over top of the field, just 10 above. Turn off my terrain so I can see what I want. 500. Over here, so I can just come over and across and fly across. And you can go ahead and call Moresby, and just let them know we're in the circuit. I don't really know what the winds are going to do. You quite yeah, yeah. Final. Yeah. Can I call after landing? Uh, yeah, we'll just call after landing, please. Moresby, 5565, five, no, we're Tango Kilo. Tango Kilo, Moresby, land. Tango Kilo is in the circuit, Lele. Report after landing. Tango Kilo. All right, so taking a look out here towards the coast, it's just a nice smooth clear nothingness out there yep. we could go back this way but just for the sake of them let's just go that way and that way you'll also just get one more eye on a different route yeah. i said 94 over top of the field it's just on the other side of that ridge over there and take a look at the water when we fly over this next river the water is like usually like i mean so crazy blue minerals in it or something are just unreal. Really steep cliffs here. Oh man, yeah they are. 
like straight down. Right, 20 degrees of flaps just now. Because I'm going all the way to 94 knots over top of the field, I'm going 20 degrees now. It's just going to give it just a little bit more stability as opposed to just 10 degrees at 94. Okay. And it will help me also slow down to 94, whereas if I'm 10 degrees, it's just going to take so much less power, and then you're just kind of like wallering, even at the same speed, just because you just don't have as much control. We want to 2,300 feet, 94. Looks like we'll have a little bit of a tailwind, maybe our crosswind not landing. All stations, light lay one, two, seven, decimal one. Kodiak, no river, take a kilo, over flying the field for left downwind, runway two, zero, light lay. 500. Looks cut nice, don't see anybody on. There's a walking path across towards the end, that's where I'd like to touch down. Wind socks just hanging there. Be one person up and walking down the runway, but I think they're probably just checking the runway. All right, smoke in the valley, just looking for winds. It looks pretty calm down there. Maybe a little bit up this way, so maybe two or three knots crosswind potentially. Did you add any any speed to the Oh, no, that's what I normally, yeah, I do want to do that, so thank you. Um, I'm going to add four knots. Our correction, four knots, there we go. All right, we wanted 84 knots on downwind. We should bump it up to 88 now because we're going 68. Any base, 2,000. Wind, still got a crosswind, potential tailwind as well on landing. Up and harnesses are done, left to go, and that's landing clearance to go. There's our 2,000. I'm gonna wait till this river up here before I turn. I'm just gonna add power in and hold my altitude for a second. Turning final, 1,800. Right, here's the river, here's 1.7 nautical miles. On to 78. It's not it's crosswind. This is kind of what it was like last time, but it was like 13. I go any lower yet. A full flaps checklist is complete. Final 68 knots. You can see the slope, but it doesn't look as bad as I buy, that's for sure. No. All right, I feel like I'm coming in well a little bit. Two knots tailwind. Five hundred. All right, four knots tailwind, and we're committed. there for a second. I don't think I've ever done that here. That's wild. All right, low idle. I'm just parked in the middle of the runway because it's kind of soft in there. It's probably not terrible today, but we'll just park out here. Guys, thanks for joining Brad and I. Give it a thumbs up if you guys thought that was fun and exciting and just something a little different, dealing with clouds and some of our own experiments. So. Check out some of my other videos if you're interested, and see you guys next time.